first painting looked like? Ever? Ever. My dad has it down in his house. Yeah? I did it in a wet painting of like, a, you know, it was a landscape, it was a covered bridge with trees around it and shit. Was it off a picture or just out of your head? Just out of my head um, with the scenery and then had a little picture of a covered bridge and that's what I used. And I did it, my art teacher like really liked it, you know? And I really liked it too. Because up, up until then, where it mostly was draw with ink and pencils and stuff and crayons and, you know, I guess in 10th grade I was, I learned how to throw like pottery, but I was really bad at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I never really pursued that, you know. I admire people who can, who, who can get that piece of clay centered and make a pot out of it because I had a hell of a time centering the clay. But, um, that was my first one, it was like 11th grade in high school. Pretty well. 
But um, yeah, it's, he just wanted something because he liked what I did at Curious Goods. He was a funny guy, though, Jack. If he really was. The fence? Yeah, whose place is it? Why? Oh, well, the, fe the fence is um, it's the Bowen family. There are people that own the antique store in Oryxburg. Uh, they're avid gardeners, as you can tell. Their whole gig is an English garden. That's what that is. Uh, with the furniture and everything else you could cram into it, antiques, whatever. You know, they're little big antique people, obviously. So uh, they got me to do that. God, that was eight years ago now. It was a while ago. You know? And they just put up the privacy fence. So they put this privacy fence up and, you know, hey, well, you know why not decorate it? It's right on the fence, though. So I didn't really prime the fence. I only primed the areas that were going to be the objects that I painted. So that's why it took so long. It had to, they wanted to keep the wood background, but the paint had to last on it. And you really can't paint on unprimed or unprimed uh, pressure treated wood like that. So everything I drew everything first in white, and then I went back over everything. So it took like two months. Do I talk about Goodfellas? Yeah, go ahead. Well, Goodfellas uh, started out, they, you know, they had their picnic grove and they had that, that grove in the back. And Goodfellas, they were in such a rush to get that stage soundproofed that they forgot to like move the stage up to the other end of the property, which would have made it a lot easier for the bands to get their gear in to get on the stage. Because right now it's, it's a logistical nightmare which they're trying to improve upon, you know. But um, Goodfellas was chaos. Chaos, man, as far as the building of the building, the people coming and going, people putting things in other people's way, five different contractors working on it, on it you know, it was insanity, you know. Mike Galata was like 20 foot up on the scaffolding and, and the whole thing gave way. And he, had, he rode it to the ground, you know, and, and just missed the, he uh, took a cooler cabinet and, out and had a place in the middle of the room just missed it. In fact, he caught up with his pants leg and ripped his pants leg. That's how close he came to hitting the corner with his leg of the, of the uh, yeah, he was like 20 feet in the air on the scaffold. And it was just, we all watched him ride it down, you know? Was, and uh, all we could think is, man, I hope he makes it, you know? And he did. <laughs> <laughs> but everything was rush, rush, rush in the end. And, you know, I, I was the same way. On April 15th, I was finishing the mural, you know? Cause that's how long it took. I think it was like, I think it's 54 feet by 16, I think, you know. That was a lot of up and down ladder, you know, which was the best way to do it in that room. Because there's no way I could have put scaffolding up, not with the people moving it, you know. I was, I was painting that mural while guys were bringing in the sound equipment, you know, setting it up, you know, all the speakers, I mean, they're, they're permanent, what their speakers were gonna be, you know. And Jesus, God, man, you had, you had two piles of speakers, you know, 12 foot high, you know right in front of the stage and, you know, you had to go somewhere with them. I don't know, you know, what the hell they did with all of them. But I guess they had a place, but, uh, yeah, it was chaos. It was chaos. Did they tell you how to paint that? Yeah, they had specific pictures of, the, of their favorite rockers. And it was Mike and Deb Galata who picked them. Mike got to pick his favorites, and Deb got to pick her favorites. Yeah, Mikey, you know, Roy Stewart, uh, Kiss, uh, Stones, that was both of them. Deb wanted Madonna. You know, Alice Cooper was, they were both big fans of Alice Cooper. So, you know, that's really, their specific, not really total specific reasons. They just, that's their favorite bunch of people. I mean, there's so many people that could have been up there, you know? Like, where's Jimmy Page? Where's, you know? And then we decided that down the road, there would be a whole wall devoted to Jimmy Page. You know? I don't know about the whole band, just Page, you know? And so many people, you know, would come in and say, well, how about this guy? How about that guy? Well, hell, we're running out of room, you know? <laughs>
convincingly, but also have like this kind of impact. Like it went beyond just being scenery, you know? It's like, yeah, man, you're saying something through that, you know? And the older I got, though, the more I read it, the more I experimented and stuff. Uh, you know, I really appreciate modernism a lot. I love abstract painting. Love all the, you know, guys like throwing paint around in the 50s. I love that kind of stuff. It's beautiful paint. <laughs> Beautiful, expressive name. So I appreciate it all now, but early influence is Rhea. I just like the Andrew Wyeth and you know, the realistic stuff. just like the school district's pitched. From the high school down to the, to the middle school parking lot, that's the same pitch, you know, just about. And I wanted to fit the, the scene that what I saw on Sharp Mountain into that, like you're flying over it. I said, well, I don't care if I cut certain aspects off, I want to have it meet the, where it's supposed to be to meet the pitch. And that's how I, de that's how I designed that, where uh, each building, like the high school, turned out to be like about 35 feet long for scale, you know? And it was a fun project because it was like doing one big giant painting of the district, you know, which I'd rather do more than a collage. I mean, collages are great for certain things, and, you know, they, they work well for murals in, in certain situations, but this one was, it would look a lot cooler just to put the district on there. And that's what, you know, that's a sketch I came up with, and that's what they approved.
the goal do you have as an artist other than um my goal is just to be able to to maintain what I'm doing that's all I don't I can't plan anything five years ahead ten years ahead or anything uh, my goal is to just um, keep growing as an artist and have enough of a income to maintain myself to do it that's all you know uh, anything else in, is you know gravy if I get it I get it if I don't I don't you know but as long as my work is satisfying and as long as I'm want to create new artwork as long as I'm driven to, to do it and I don't seem to be getting stale I don't seem to be getting bored with it you know that you know I really have what I want I'm afraid that if I'd ask for too much I'd just be setting myself up for disappointment you know I mean any artist maybe would like to say well I like to just work on what I want to all day and you know sell it for fifty thousand dollars a piece and yeah you know but that's one of those things that you know it happens to a hundredth of one percent of all artists, you know, usually it's just, you just got to be happy with what you're doing and be able to maintain what you're doing. Is there anything or anywhere that you would like to, to work? Mm -hmm. Is there anything special? Oh, sure. Sure. The first federal across the, you know, grass tap, that whole side of that building right there would be a heck of a place for a mural, you know. The community banks where their drive through is they just a you know, giant wall right there you know and that's all finished and ready to, to work on it. Uh, there's lots of spaces here in town to do what uh, York Pennsylvania did and I told you about that a little earlier York was something that was set up out of their version of PADCO it was the York Industrial Development Corporation and they found this this sub uh, corporation called the Murals of York and what they did is they and all around the country, and up into Canada, and even in PA and local, to find enough artists to do 25 major murals in, in New York. And they're all based on history of the town, manufacturing, things that, that came from the town. As, you know, Pottsville could do it with maybe John O'Hara, or maybe the mining industry, or whatever, you know. Or you could recreate Minersville Street in a big mural, you know. It was, a, it was that old, uh, Jazz District of Pottsville is what it was, you know. Uh, but York was the one that uh, their mural corporation were the ones that went out and did private fundraising and had matching funds and got the artists in and had a committee and uh, wrote the contracts and you know had the mural approval and you know you had, you had a bunch of committees. It was a very you know well structured thing. And out of it, over a period of seven years, they got 25 murals by uh, 11 different artists. And so it's, it's neat. You can go down, take a tour, you know, and, and see my work as well as people that are just fantastic, man. Just fantastic. One guy was from, lived in Canada, but he was from Scotland. He looked like Santa Claus. You know, his name, I forget his name, but he, you know. But he, was, he did a York Fairground mural. Uh, Alan Wiley was his name. And he was 63 years old and had a 40 year career of doing murals and stuff, you know. And had been all over the world, and he was more into talking about golfing and paint. He was more into that, you know. He'd done all that, you know. But I like to see Pottsville do that if they could form a, a corporation called the Murals of Pottsville, where they can get funding and you know uh, call upon local artists or state artists or even artists within maybe a 200 mile area to come in and you know submit sketches and. You know, these are the walls we have available. This is this project. You know, here's what we're looking for. Uh, you can give us a sketch and give us a bid, and it goes to the you know. And yeah, I can see that happening in the future. That's a good goal to have. I can't say I have no goals, but for this town, it'd be neat to have that. It'd be neat to have people f that I've met, as well as others I haven't met, come in here and and do things. You know, because really, when you have like. You know, 11, 12 different people doing them. Man, they're all diverse. They're all different, man. And that's what you want. The whole thing about one guy doing it, it no, it all looks, you know, too much like one guy. I don't think it's a good thing overall. I think it's a good thing is to have, you know, hey, even five other people come in and, and do them, you know. And you have a, a whole series of murals that are all diverse, and you know. So if anything, yeah. And Pottsville's a nice town for that, you know. It's, we were talking about Pottsville the other day, the, the potential as far as it, uh, you know, rezoning and residential downtown and uh, 
having a lot of shops for that, and sort of like Maniunk, you know, where if you go to a, a, a bar like Hucklebucks, where there's a lot of them then, you know, and all of a sudden there's a lot of people in town, you know, all weekend long at night included, you know, this town gets dead at night, it just, you know, everybody goes away, and all the activities down where the two bars are, and sometimes here, but not really, you know, it's not really crowded, you know, not like it could be. But yeah, so I guess that would be a goal. Someday to, you know, just start that. And say, hey, here's a town for you mural painters and paint all over the world. Come here now, you know, and see what you can do. Hey. Favorite mural? Um, I really like doing the one out in New Philly of the football team because uh, they were real guys I was painting a picture of. And it was so long ago when their place was uh, a lot more alive than it is now, and um, I, getting to meet some of them, you know, they're all in their 80s. I think there's like two of them left, you know. And doing a painting of guys that, you know, one of the dudes got killed in World War II, you know, in the whole nine yards, and, and uh, just said, here's these guys, they have their whole lives ahead of them, and they're like 17, 18 years old, and they're state champions, and they were underdogs. They had to drive a long way out to Western PA back in the 30s to win the championship game. So these guys were, were pretty cool. And probably that one, or the two I did in New York, Pennsylvania, those are two of my favorite ones. Simply because that was just, uh, it was a good situation down there for me as an artist working. And, uh, they were very receptive, and uh, they were very good as far as how the, my whole contract set up and everything. It was a real commission, you know? And the ones I did in New York were for the Chamber of Commerce, and for the historical society over a two-year period, and uh, I'm part of a mural tour down there. So yeah, I'm kind of proud of that. Yeah, they're my favorite ones. You know, when I look at them, you know, it was just the right situation. They, the paintings went really well because the contract went really well. You know, I asked for a certain price, gave me a certain price. Uh, they gave me scaffolding. They gave me paint. They put me up in a hotel because I was. You know, I, I live further than 40 miles away. You know, they're really, it was a really good scene. It really was. I met a lot of nice people while I was there, you know. So it's, you know, those two. And New Philly. And really, like every project I do, I like, you know, there's never been one I hated to do. It, it, they're all, some are smaller than others, some are take longer time, some just pique my interest more than others. But, you know, they're all, you know, they're all stuff I do, so, you know, I can't... It's never been one I didn't like, you know, or, like, disliked, you know. There were some situations where, uh, like, some of the people got kind of tough, but, you know, other than that, no. It was, you know, it's been pretty good.